Gospel, chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. That's where we're going to begin. Excuse me. And the title of my text is, Free at Last. Free at Last. You know, I can remember when I was growing up, Martin Luther King was quite popular then. This is before some things happened. And he used to say, I've been up to the mountaintop and I'm free at last. I've been up to the mountaintop and I'm free at last. And my dear people, that's what I'm going to be ministering tonight because you see, we've all been up to the mountaintop and we're free at last. We are free at last. <clears throat> and we see here in John's Gospel, chapter 14, beginning in verse um, 13, the Word of God says, and whatsoever ye... Who's he talking to there? He's talking to us, is he not? And he said, Whatsoever we shall ask in my name, or ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, <clears throat> I will do it. Now, my dear people, this is not a prayer. It is Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior giving us a legal right to use His name to do what? To cast out devils, to heal the sick, and to meet the forces of darkness head on as a conqueror. Head on as a conqueror. <clears throat> the Word of God says in Romans 8.37, For we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Okay, now if you would turn with me, please, to John's Gospel, chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. John's Gospel, 16, verses 23 and 24. And the Word of God says, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. He'll give it to who? Who's going to ask? What are we supposed to ask? Whatsoever. Whatsoever we shall ask. Then he says, Hereunto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. So you see, my dear people, this is the ground for prayer. There is no power upon earth or in the heavenlies that can withstand the name of Jesus Christ or the Word of God. So you see, prayer is based, if, if, you, if you've probably learned from some of the teaching, prayer is based on the Word of God. So <clears throat> this is the reason why Jesus said, Whatsoever we shall ask the Father in my name, in His name, He will give it to us. You see, Jesus always leads us to the Father. When we pray, we are to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Not directly to Jesus. Did you know that? We are to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. Jesus always pointed to the Father. See? He was the door. He's, and that's how we get in, through His blood. So He always points to the Father. <clears throat> so you see, Jesus Himself has given us, who? Us, the right to use His name against the forces of darkness. And that name is identical with Himself. With himself. The name of Jesus has the same power that was in Christ in his earth walk. You're going to get a lot of revelation, some things this evening. <clears throat> we get moving here. Now, turn with me to Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. Mark's Gospel, chapter 16. Beginning in verse 17. <coughs> Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, beginning in verse 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, how many believers we got in here? Now, who is he talking to here? <coughs> now, let me ask you something. Are these signs following you? Huh? They're supposed to be. They're supposed to be. 
So he said, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. And of course, as you all know, we're in the middle of casting a big devil out of this town. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And then they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them. With who? The disciples. With us. And confirming the word with signs following. So you see the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So you see, my dear people, the Lord is saying, you step out, I will confirm my word with signs following. I will confirm my word with signs following. Now you see why that no devils or sickness and disease can stand against the word of God. Why? Because God himself will confirm it. He will confirm it. Now, you see, my dear people, we give out the word of God in our lips. Do we not? We give out the Word of God in our lips. It is the Word in our lips that heals, sets free, and delivers. So we give out the Word, how? Through our lips. And it is the Word in our lips that heals, sets free, and delivers. It is the Word in our lips when we speak to our Father that gives us the answer to our position, to our, in our petition. That was when we were praying the Word of God. It is the name of Jesus in our lips that casts out devils that breaks the power of Satan. It is the name of Jesus that sets the captives free that gives us a standing in the Father's presence. Okay, hang in here. Now turn with me to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. Actually, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. (coughs) Hebrews chapter 4, beginning in verse 14 through 16. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified because it expounds on what I'm trying to get across here. Hallelujah. Inasmuch, then, as we have a great high priest who has already ascended and passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession of faith in Him. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and our inabilities. You see? Because you see, people (coughs) have a a fear that will come against them. They think, well, I have a weakness or I'm not able or I'm, I don't, you know, I'm in ability or I don't have this or that. And they, they are reluctant to step out for God. But you see, Jesus himself, he understands and he sympathizes and, and he has shared this feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities to the assaults of the enemy or the temptation. But one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning, talking about Jesus. Then in verse 16, he says, let us. Who's he talking to there? He's talking to us. He's saying, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. In other words, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Then we see in Hebrews 10, 19. In other words, what Jesus, or God is telling us here is the Word of God asks us to come boldly unto the throne of grace. The Word of God is telling us to come boldly to the throne of grace. Now, how many of you know what the word grace means? Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. Unearned favor. And he tells us to come fearlessly, confidently, 
and boldly and draw near to the throne of grace. <clears throat> In other words, even though we have unmerited favor, we have unearned favor. Now, when you turn to Hebrews 10, 19, the Word of God says, Therefore, brethren, since we have full freedom and confidence to enter into the Holy of Holies by the power and virtue in the blood of Jesus. Therefore, brethren, who's he talking to there? He's talking to us, is he not? And he's saying, since who? We. We. Who? Us. Have full freedom and confidence to enter into the Holy of Holies by the power and virtue in the blood of of Jesus Christ. In other words, we have unmerited favor. Unearned favor is called grace. The words it's called grace. To do what? <clears throat> to enter into the Holy of Holies. We have full freedom and confidence to do what? To enter into the Holy of Holies. What is the Holy of Holies? It's God's presence without Sin. Why? Because of the blood of the Lamb. In Revelation 12, 11, it says we have overcome him, meaning the enemy, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So you see, <clears throat> there is no ground for what I call sin consciousness. There is no ground for sin consciousness. Why? It's because we have become the very righteousness of God in Christ. We have become the very righteousness of God in Christ. You know what the word righteousness means? It means right standing. It means right standing. So we have become the very righteousness of God in Christ. In other words, we have been brought into right standing. How? By the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of the Lamb. I'm a teacher of righteousness. Noah was a preacher of righteousness. You see? Right standing. Why? Because of the blood of the Lamb. My dear people, I don't care what we can do, we can't earn it. We can't earn it. You see, there's no way that we can earn it. And that's a problem with, 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 with a lot of, 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 of churches today. That's, that, 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 I call it religion. We call it religion. They, they, they think you have to earn your way every step, every day. They think you have to earn your way into heaven if that was the case, Jesus would have never went to the cross. You see, each and every one of us had been bought, purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are the righteousness of God. In other words, we have been brought into right standing by God's grace. People don't understand that. People have a hard time understanding. <coughs> Who, me? Who, me? But here I'm telling you, this evening, as we go on, you'll see, because... My dear people, there's no reason in God's green earth that you should not be stepping out laying hands on the sick and they shall recover. Why? Because you are in right standing right now with God. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to pray more. You don't have to do anything. Just do it. Do you understand? We are the righteousness of God. We have been brought into right standing. How? Through His grace, His unmerited favor, we can walk into hell, holy of holies, uh, in the very presence of God, fearlessly, confidently. Why? Because we are the sons and the daughters of God Almighty. You see? <clears throat> the Word of God says in 2 Cor uh, 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 Corinthians 5.21, For He hath, Past tense, my dear people. Past tense. Made him, who? Jesus. To be sin for who? Us. Who knew no sin that we, who? Us. Might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see, we have been brought into right standing because of him. Because of the Lord of, of, of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Because of his blood. You see, that's the reason when he was stretched out on the cross. He said, it is Finish. He's conquered for us. He's conquered for us. You see, my dear people, that's the reason why he says, go out here and take back the land. <clears throat> We've already won the victory. Say this with me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the righteousness of God. Say it again. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. 
That's right. My dear people, we have the same liberty. We have the same freedom to stand in the presence of God that Jesus Christ His very self had. You see? Everyone tries to earn it. Everyone tries to earn it. That's what religion does to us. That's what religion does to us. That's the reason why the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the religious people back in, in, in the times of Jesus couldn't understand Him. Well, you've got to earn this. You can't just uh, uh, shed your blood and set them free. You see? But your people, the price has already been paid. The price has already been paid. Say that with me. The price has already been paid. Right. I want you to say this with me. I am what He says I am in the Word. I am what He says I am in the Word. That's right. The Word of God says in 1 John 3, 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath, past tense, hath, past tense, bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. Say this with me. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. I am a child of God. That's right. You see, we see in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, the Word of God says, There is... Therefore, now, no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Romans 8.1 There is therefore now. When? 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 Now. No what? Condemnation. There is therefore now. Right this many seconds. No condemnation to who? Them which are in Christ Jesus. Are we in Christ Jesus? Yes. Huh? Yes. My dear people, if you ever feel condemned, you know where it comes from? It comes from the enemy. It comes from the enemy. Because there is no condemnation in them through our who are in Christ Jesus. Now, when we finish the text here, it says, Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Are we not all walking after the Spirit? Okay. Condemnation does not belong to us. So you see, my dear people, there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Say that with me. There is therefore... That's right. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because you see, my dear people, we've all been to the mountaintop. We are free We've all been to the mountaintop. Say it with me. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. (coughs) My dear people, we can stand in the Father's presence the very same way that our Lord Jesus Christ stood in His presence. We don't have to earn it. The very moment we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts, into our lives as our Lord Jesus Christ, our slate is wiped clean. The sin is gone. Never to be remembered again. Never to be remembered again from that point backwards. The devil comes at you and tries to remind you of your past. You say, devil, that's all right. I'll remind you of your future. I'll remind you of your future. And then turn to the back page and read it to him. Huh? Remind him of the future. And then read it to him. My dear people, you know, we don't have to die to get liberty. We don't have to die to walk in freedom. We don't have to die to walk in the kingdom of God. We have the liberty now. We have the freedom now. And we're walking in the kingdom right now. Is that where God reigns? In His righteousness? His peace? His joy? Is that thought the kingdom of God? Amen. So, my dear people, you see, we have it now. We have it 
now. We have it. Say that with me. We have it now. When? Now. now. That's right. We have it now. <clears throat> but you see what happens is, here comes the devil. Here comes Satan. And he lies to us. And why? Because he's a deceiver. He's a deceiver. He comes and he lies and he deceives and he beats, tries to beat on us and says, you're condemned, you're guilty, you did this, you did that. You see? What is it, what is it that we've been ministering about? Thoughts and fiery darts. Thoughts and fiery darts. Consider the source. Consider the source. You see? He's not our father no more. He's gone. He's not our father no more. We walk in, in the kingdom of God. Let me ask you something. When you walking, when we when, when we used to walk in the kingdom of darkness, <clears throat> and we don't want to think about those days, but all of us did because we were born into it, huh? Weren't we? Okay. Did we go run up the devil every day and say, "Oh, oh, devil, what do you want me to do today?" No. Why? We just automatically walked in the kingdom of darkness, didn't we? And the same is pretty well true with God. Yes, He leads us, but when you're walking in the kingdom of God, we have a rule book. All we have to do is follow it. All we have to do is follow it. We, we make it hard on ourselves. You know how we make it hard on ourselves? We try to earn it. We try to earn it. That's right. We try to earn it. My dear people, sickness and disease cannot resist the word in the lips of faith. Sickness and disease cannot resist the Word. It must yield to the Word of God. It must bend its knee to the Word of God. My dear people, sickness and disease comes from the enemy's camp. And you better never forget it. You better never forget it. Sickness and disease is from the enemy. God is a giver of all good gifts. If you have a sickness in your body and you don't acknowledge it, <clears throat> I mean, acknowledge where it comes from because you're under attack by the devil. You better believe it. It's not from God. God doesn't <clears throat> give it sickness and disease. He wouldn't put His very, very own Son on the cross and let Him die <clears throat> and then turn right around and put sickness on His children that He's already bought and paid for. Now, would He? <clears throat> My dear people, <clears throat> as disciples of Christ, we are a master. We are a master over sickness and disease. We are a master over devils and their works. <coughs> Did you hear me? We are a master over sickness and disease. We are a master over devils and their works. You see, here's what, here's what sickness and disease says. I don't, <coughs> sickness and disease has voices. It has a voice. It'll tell you how sick you are. It'll tell you how much pain you got. It has a voice. You better believe it. What's it trying to do? It's trying to get you to come in agreement with it. Anybody know how the prayer agreement works? It works both ways. But my dear people, sickness and disease. You know what it says? It says, <clears throat> you cannot unseat me. Yeah. He says, you cannot unseat me. I have authority over this body. I am holding this one captive. <coughs> then he'll say, I have filled his heart with fear and his mouth with a confession of my strength and my ability. That's what the devil does. You better believe it. You better believe it. In Psalm 107.20, the Word of God says, He sent, past tense, His Word, and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Who's He talking about there? <clears throat> God sent His Word, past tense. God sent His Word, past tense, and healed them. Who? Us! And delivered them. Who? Us! From our destructions. Past tense. It's already been done. You see, He sent His Word and healed who? Us! He sent His Word and healed us. He sent His Word and healed who? Who's the Word? Jesus Christ. Who's the Word? Jesus is the Word. He sent His Word. Who did He send? He sent Jesus. Jesus is the Word. 
He's the living Word. He's the, the, he, Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Made alive. The Word was Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. The Word was Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Turn with me to Romans chapter 10. Please. Just a couple pages over. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10, beginning in verse 8. The Word of God says, But what saith it? The Word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the Word of faith, which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen? Okay. Haven't we all confessed with our mouth the Lord Jesus? Don't we all believe in our heart the Lord Je- that God raised Him from the dead? All right. Then the Word of God says we are saved. We are saved. You know what that makes us? That makes us the Son of God. That makes us the Son of God. Verse 10. For with the heart, that was your spirit, man, man believeth unto righteousness. Right standing. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. And that is with the very minute that you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and as Savior, He is, we are saved. We are saved. And then in verse 11 it says, For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. Now let's, uh, let me ask you this. How many whosoever's have we got in here tonight? How many, how many whosoever's? Huh? All right. How many whosoever's do we have that are believers? Got some believers? Okay. So we got some whosoever's and we got some believers. Amen? Well, the Word of God says, Whosoever believeth on Him shall not be ashamed. Did you hear me? Shall not be ashamed. I want you to say that with me. We shall not be ashamed. We shall not be ashamed. We shall not be ashamed. You see, my dear people, we've got to come to the revelation that we are the body of Christ. I know you've heard me stand up here and say, Who's the body? Who's the body? We are. We're His hands, His feet, or his, his feet, His hands. His pocketbook, His voice. Remember the, remember the message about the voice of the Word. Okay. We are His body. And my dear people, we are taking His place upon the earth. We are taking His place and acting for Him. We are His body. Now, in Romans 12, chapter 2. The Word of God says, and of course, we've been ministering about renewing of the mind, have we not? Okay. Because the Lord wants us to renew the mind to the Word of God. But He also wants us to re- renew our mind in the way we think in regards to His body. 